So Parkinson's disease psychosis has a distinct clinical profile from other forms of psychosis, particularly schizophrenia. In Parkinson's disease psychosis, the hallucinations are overwhelmingly visual, although they can be auditory or tactile or even olfactory, which is ironic since many Parkinson's patients have lost their sense of smell. Nevertheless, the hallucinations are very visual and um, it can also be accompanied with delusions. But again, the delusions that you see in Parkinson's disease psychosis are different typically than the delusions you see in schizophrenia. In Parkinson's disease psychosis, the delusions tend to be uh, either of spousal infidelity or paranoia, but it's not the, tip, the, the sort of bizarre delusions that you see in schizophrenia where they think the FBI has put a chip in my head or something like that. We really don't see that in uh, Parkinson's disease psychosis. The pathophysiologic mechanisms underlying the development of PDP are very complex. When I was in medical school, we were taught that Parkinson's disease psychosis is largely the result of too much dopamine. And we now realize that that's probably not correct and that other neurotransmitters, particularly serotonin, may play a key role in the development of Parkinson's disease psychosis. We know that in Parkinson's disease psychosis, there's loss of serotonin in the raphe nuclei. And with this, we believe there's upregulation of uh, serotonin receptors uh, postsynaptically. As a result, these receptors fire at a basal rate and may be hyperactive. This hyperactivity of serotonin is accompanied by um, hyperactivity of dopaminergic neurons in the uh, mesolimbic system as well. So we believe it's a complex interaction between these two states of um, too much activity at the serotonin uh, receptor and um, in certain areas of the brain too much activity of dopamine, despite the fact that Parkinson's disease is uh, a state where there often isn't enough dopamine. In addition, glutamate may also play a role in Parkinson's disease psychosis. So it's a very complex system. It's not simply dopamine the way that we always thought in the past. The major limitation of using atypical antipsychotic drugs in treating people with Parkinson's disease psychosis is that they block dopamine. And when you block dopamine in someone with Parkinson's, you can worsen them motorically. So the goal is to have a medication that can treat Parkinson's disease psychosis without worsening motoric function, without blocking dopamine. And this is one of the things that makes uh, pimavanserin uh, unique. It is an atypical antipsychotic medication that has no affinity for dopamine receptors and as a result uh, does not affect motor function. And we saw this in the uh, pivotal trial where there was no difference in the unified Parkinson's disease rating scale scores, parts two and three, of folks on pimavanserin versus folks on placebo. So pimavanserin was approved based on a pivotal six-week double-blind placebo-controlled study looking at pimavanserin, 34 milligrams, versus placebo using a scale called the SAPS-PD, the scale for assessment of positive symptoms in Parkinson's disease. And what we found at the end of the six weeks is that patients on pimavanserin improved roughly about six points, 5.79 points on the SAPS-PD scale. This represented a 37% improvement. About 66% of the patients had a clinically meaningful response defined as greater than three points on the SAPS-PD scale. And about 14%, or one in seven patients, had complete resolution of their psychosis during this pivotal trial. 